get those calves ready for weaning, get them healthy, and keep them healthy. Crew, let's ranch it up. Good day, everyone, and thanks for riding with us on this all-new episode of the Ranch It Up Radio Show. I'm Jeff Tigger Earhart. And I'm Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. A big thank you goes out to our partners, the American Gelby Association, the Tri-State Livestock News, the Farmer and Rancher Exchange, and the Fence Post, Westway Feed Products, Medora Boot and Western Wear, Dakota Cowboy, Allied Genetic Resources, Livestock Market, Equine Market, AuctionTime.com, RFD TV, the Cowboy Channel, and Wrangler. There's been a lot going on at the Ranch It Up radio show headquarters. Let me just kind of tell you what we're dealing with here. We have had a, uh, as we've talked about, we had a wing dinger of a winter. And one of the things that I noticed here this past winter is that the floor on our shop was cracked all the way through. And this, by the way, we had a very, very nice shop floor that did not have any... Had cracks in it previously and the shop has been around for a lot of years and thankfully has always maintained an excellent shape and then all of a sudden we've noticed kind of water is springing up here and springing up there everybody knows where i'm going with this you've battled it yourself well we've been spending the last several weeks actually putting in drain tile digging little ditches trying to drain things out uh, and it's been a headache. And isn't that how it works is that it seems like when you just kind of start to get ahead a little bit and you can actually go and you can breathe, another project gets piled on it's and a- another one. <laughs> Obviously, I'm griping a little bit because, I mean, this this has just been unbelievable of what we've been dealing with. And I know some of you are dealing with much worse, of course, but. This is what we're fighting right now at the Ranch It Up Radio Show headquarters. So what Tigger is saying, we're in the trenches just along with you. Just when you think things are going good, there's always something that makes you go two steps forward, one step back. But I'm going to say this. I am very thankful, though, because there are so many other people that have been suffering. Uh, We've actually got, got more details on that. I mean, with the heat and the humidity in other parts of the country. And of course, we need to remember all of those people that are over in Hawaii that are Mm -hmm. suffering terribly. I mean, we've reported on wildfires many times and uh, glad when we don't have to report on that. So with that, let's dive right into the news. Cow country news, you know, the cow stuff. Our leading news story, anthrax. No one ever wants to hear that word spoken. There are now 16 premises affected by anthrax in southwest North Dakota, 15 laboratory confirmed cases, and one probable case based on clinical signs. One confirmed case is in eastern Hedinger County, with the remaining cases in Grant County. The cases were confirmed by the North Dakota State University Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory. North Dakota State Veterinarian Dr. Ethan Andrus says the cases are a reminder to livestock producers throughout the state to take action to protect their animals from the disease, especially in areas with a past history of anthrax. Producers in the affected area have been working with veterinarians to vaccinate and treat animals. Veterinarians are reporting that the vaccination and treatment protocols are extremely effective. Conditions are right for anthrax in many areas of the state. Producers should monitor their herds for unexplained deaths and work with their veterinarian to ensure appropriate samples are collected and submitted to a diagnostic lab to give the best chance of obtaining a diagnosis. Vaccines must be given annually for continued protection. The response has been a coordinated effort by multiple entities on the state and local level, including health care experts, emergency management, NDSU extension, environmental and disposal personnel, as well as other producers and county officials. Agriculture Commissioner Doug Goring says, While typically only a few anthrax cases are reported in North Dakota every year, it can cause devastating losses in affected herds. He says weather and soil conditions have contributed to the number of cases seen this year. Anthrax is caused by bacteria that can lie dormant in the ground for decades and become active under ideal conditions, such as heavy rainfall, flooding, and drought. Animals are exposed to the disease when they graze or consume forage or water contaminated with the spores. 
I know there was a lot there in that one, but we wanted to make sure you got all the details. Now in other news, Nebraska Governor Pillen had a phone call with the U.S. Department of Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack to inform him of livestock losses recently experienced by cattle producers. The combination of extreme temperatures, high humidity, and lack of air movement over the course of several days impacted cattle feeders in the east-central region of the state. Governor Pillen is requesting Secretary Vilsack's help in ensuring producers receive timely and appropriate federal support through existing disaster assistance programs, such as the Livestock Indemnity Program. Governor Pillen stated that the weather situation only lasted a few days, but some Nebraska producers were significantly impacted. Connecting affected producers with emergency resources available to them is important, and he appreciates the time Secretary Vilsack took to understand what cattle producers experienced and is hopeful he will be able to assist in this unique situation. The LIP provides financial benefits to producers who suffer excessive livestock losses due to adverse weather. All losses or injuries must be documented within 30 days, making reporting of those situations time-sensitive. Governor Pillen urged producers to do their part and report losses to their county farm service agencies. It wasn't just Nebraska cattle feeders that suffered losses. Cattle throughout the region and various parts of the country have been lost to high heat and humidity. I have some additional news. Farmer sediment improved modestly in July of this year. That is according to the monthly Purdue University CME Group Ag Economy Barometer, which surveyed producers between July 10th and the 14th. Now, comparing the July responses to last fall, the percentage of producers saying now is a good time for large investments have improved to 17% from just 10% from last November, and the percentage of farmers who feel it's a bad time to invest declined to 72% from 79% last November. Those feelings are despite a rise in the percentage of producers who expect interest rates to rise over the next year, I being one of them. Nearly two-thirds, right around 65% of producers in July said they expect interest rates to increase, me being one of them, up from 57% who felt that way back in June. Among those producers who said now is a bad time to make large investments, the top reason cited for this being a bad time was concern about rising interest rates. Now, given the volatility in commodity prices, especially crop prices, this spring and early summer is notable that more producers expressed concern about rising interest rates than declining output prices. And now some other news. This is a good one here, too. A new survey by the Purdue University College of Agriculture has made it clear just how much consumers prefer beef from cattle to alternative proteins. They didn't need a survey. I could have told you that. According to the research, 71% of consumers think the best of beef is, quote, much or somewhat better than plant-based alternatives, and 73% think it is better than cell-cultured meat. Could have told you that one, too. Other noticeable comparisons. Appearance. 66% better than plant-based or cell-cultured. In fact, 70% say the appearance is better than cell-cultured. Freshness, 57 and 68% better. Naturalness, is that even a word? Naturalness? I guess it is. 64 and 71% better. Price, 61 and 63% better. And farmer well-being, 62 and 71% better than plant-based and cell cultured. Now, the survey concluded by saying, by far, consumers feel beef from cattle is superior to the alternatives. I could have done that for nothing. (laughs) And that is a look at news of what we have for y'all. Now, coming up, it's very important. Weaning time is right around the corner, and we have to get those calves healthy. But the key is to keep those calves healthy. How do we do it? We've got solutions and ideas for y'all because that's what we do on the Ranch It Up radio show, and we'll be back right after this. Folks, by now you're probably well aware of how LivestockMarket.com can help you market cows, pears, bread heifers, and bulls. If you haven't used our online auction platform yet to sell cows, you really should give it a try. It's fast, easy, and affordable. You take the photos and videos yourself, send them in, and choose your auction date. And that's it. The cattle are sold before they ever leave the ranch. You know that voice. We hear him every single week with updates. That's Mark Vanzi with LivestockMarket.com. Check him out. LivestockMarket.com. 
on Beck TV, it's crunch time in the North Dakota Rodeo Association, and there is a lot of money and gold up for grabs. You can catch all the hot rodeo action on your TV live on Beck Sports or online at Beck.tv. It's called sustainability, and we all need it in the cow herd to remain profitable. Sustainability starts with the cow, and it's found in the maternal strength of Gelvy and Balancer females. It's hard to imagine, but weaning time will be here before you know it, and we're going to be faced with how are we going to replace those cold females, and what are we going to replace them with? Well, the answer is real simple. Create sustainability with Gelvy and Balancer females. Smart, reliable, profitable. Want to add just a little bit of spice to your event, your customer appreciation supper, your banquet, your meeting? Oh, yeah. Well, bring in us, Beck and I, your keynote speakers, hosts, MCs, a host couple. We'll make them laugh, even cry tears of joy. Call us today. Cattle Battle. It's the Ranch It Up Radio Show, the most information packed into a 30-minute program that you can find anywhere. It's your all-things ranching newscast, and so glad that you all are hanging out with us questions comments concerns criticisms rants it doesn't matter give us a shout at 707-726-2420 that's 707 ranch 20 you can call or you can text us at that number you can email us ranch it up show at gmail.com prowling around social media at ranch it up show now weaning it's hard enough it's a hard enough time on those calves the way it is and today, again, we bring you solutions, and it all revolves around marketing, calf health, setting up those calves for success. I've said it a million times, that phrase. Letting buyers know what programs those calves have been on, that they are on, etc. How about adding some extra pounds on those calves? Now, let me put it to you all this way. An extra 25 pounds comes in at $70 plus per calf. In fact, we're going to be more than that. Take that times a, a pot load. Take that times 100 calves, and you all have $7,000 more in the bank. That's gross, okay? Did I get your attention now? Let's talk Pharmatan. We've shared a lot about Pharmatan and how it helps at calving time. In fact, it makes all the difference in the world and we're going to share more about that coming up this fall and going into winter. We're going to set your cows up for success. We're going to take care of that. But what about now? What about this stage in the calves' life? Does it work? Does it help? The answer to that is yes. And yes, it's all about keeping calves as healthy as we can and thriving during stressful times in their lives. And a stressful one, as I said, is fixing to happen here shortly with weaning right around the corner. Paul Mitchell with Pharmatan is back with us. Paul, thanks for hanging out. Let's talk about getting Pharmatan into the calves diet now and why and how it works. With weaning, uh, of course, another large stressful period for calves. Um, they're also getting brought together and commingled and maybe groups from different locations getting put together. Uh, we've seen a really good response with Pharmatan in the, in the ration, either through the TMR or via the Pharmatan liquid which in the in the water tubs, a lot of producers really talking how well the Pharmatan liquid in the water has uh, satiated the animals, not getting a break with coxie or some of the other uh, type scour pressure that can come from from getting separated. Dwayne Sievers, I know, is somebody that you, you visit with before. Mm -hmm. Dwayne, has about, Dwayne has about 15 ranches on it. And what he has seen is that uh, his weaning weights uh, between 50 and 70 pounds heavier on the on the Pharmatan ranches compared to his non-Pharmatan ranches. So those those calves would have been on creep during the summer um, with Pharmatan in the pellet, and then he makes sure that they're that it's in the weaning ration all the way through. Uh, my own brother-in-law's run about 500 head up in northeast Iowa. They used to have to rotate in deck ox and they'd have remensin in, in, their, in their ration, and they'd still get a break. The last, they're going on four years now, uh, weaning with Pharmatan in the ration, and they have not had a break, uh, and no scours in the... In the uh, in the weaning pens um, uh, at this time of the year, so we know it holds really well. And when you start selling it to family, you know you're in you're you're really uh, on thin ice. So right, uh, it, it's working well, and uh, happy to put our reputation on on, on the product. So how do we go about 
implementing Pharmatan into the diet because it seems so many people I talk with, and you know this too, Paul, it seems like, well, we're always a season behind. We're always a season behind. You know, we, we originally a few years ago introduced the product to everybody and said, you know, get this into your cows 90 days prior to calving. And then a lot of people, you know, they heard about it and said, ah, I'm behind the eight ball. I'm late. So is is the Pharmatan a product where just start using it? When is the time is is now? Especially even though we may not be thinking about calving yet, now is the time to get it in front of those calves and use it as a management practice. Is that correct? That is correct. The best thing is 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 give us a call. Um, go on the website, you get my number. Um, just give us a call. Once we understand the system a guy is, is using, if he's using tubs, we can we can supply him tubs with the pharma ten in it. If he's using uh, TMR, he can buy the uh, the, the straight uh, concentrate and add it, add it in the in the feed wagon. If he's using a micro machine, we can supply it through that uh, through Animal Health. Um, and if he wants to do a liquid version, we can do it through that as well. So we'll work with anybody in terms of their system or their uh, feed manufacturer. Uh, every one of them uh, has contacted us, uh, or, uh, and and we've got very good supply relationships with uh, the, the various feed manufacturers. So uh, if you want it incorporated in a mineral from the guy that you're already getting it from, we'd be happy to get it in there. Liquid feed, um, there's a number of liquid feed manufacturers at like QLF, um, Westway, et cetera, where we've supplied Pharmatan and been able to put it into the, into the liquid feed. So once we understand your system and how you'd like to incorporate it, just a matter of getting started. Uh, for those breeding herds, uh, Sitz Angus, uh, this year had excellent calving results. Again, this is their, they just went through their third calving season and they keep it in during the summer. Um, they have it in their, in their summer mineral. We have a lot of large ranches in their summer mineral. And then they can, um, as you change the mineral going into uh, the more of a breeder mineral in the fall, um, we can incorporate it in there as well. But just call us and we'll work a, a, a plan over with you. You know, one of the neat things that, that I've really loved about the Pharmatan system and working with my Pauls, as I say, Paul Mitchell and Paul Barton, and we haven't had Paul Martin on here in a while. We need to bring you guys back together when and tag team this deal. It has been literally one tub at a time. It's been one calf at a time. And, uh, you know, almost 100% results. I mean, there's positive all the way around every time that we're using it in this situation, in this scenario. And it all comes down to nutrition. And I find that interesting that it doesn't matter. And we've we've had, a you know, 100 plus episodes here of the Ranch It Up radio show. And so many times when we talk about management or fly control or whatever the case is, we talk about nutrition and keeping that gut healthy. That's the factory that's the foundation, and we're doing this kind of one success story at a time, one success story at a time. And nutrition, Paul, it, it's it's really it's the foundation, and I say the factory, and that's probably the best way that I can describe it because that's where it starts. Absolutely, and you know, you think about um, <clears throat> a, a a an animal in the feedlot. Well, it all goes back to um, how was that mother fed. Um, and how, how what, what was that nutrition like? Um, if, if if that calf gets a setback early in life, um, you're looking at huge impact on long term performance, uh, and, and including your heifer calves. Uh, there's a great dairy study out of Iowa State uh, here about two years ago where they showed that every every day that a female calf was in the scour episode, it took away from her peak lactation uh, when she became you know a mother cow. So um, you definitely have a long-term impact of getting sick early. Um, secondly, if we can improve the take-up and the conversion of that mineral you're already feeding that cow, you're going to program that calf in that last trimester. And, 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 and I say that loosely. We're not, we're not making any claims in terms of uh, uh, feeder pro- programming, but uh, you're going to help that mother's nutrition so that, number one, uh, you're giving that calf every opportunity to de- grow and develop inside the mother, and then secondly, we've seen about uh, in our in our studies about 15% increase in antibodies in the colostrum. So you're giving a really good, high quality colostrum into that into that uh, baby calf. And then thirdly, um, there is no impact on on milk fat with pharmatan in the diet. Some other additives can affect milk fat. Uh, with with the pharmatan, you're going to get your full milk fat coming through to that calf. And again, 
um, that's gonna that's the kind of energy you want out here in a cold spring. Uh, you want that energy getting straight into the calf. So uh, getting that good nutrition. The last thing I'd say on that tigger is, you know, we look when when guys contact us, we look at the vitamin E level in their mineral, the selenium level, the manganese level. All of those are very important for the mother's uh, colostrum and, and the mother's health. Pharmatan is a high antioxidant. It's got a very good impact, especially on improving the take up of vitamin E. And um, so it'll complement those elements of the mineral in improving the mother's uh, nutrition. Paul Mitchell with Pharmatan from Imogene Ingredients, 515-745-1639. That's 515-745-1639. More than happy to visit about your operation and share others on the program, how it works and why, one herd at a time. And you can always reach out to Beck and I here at the Ranch It Up Radio Show headquarters, and we will help you all out as well. In fact, that's our job is to provide information and solutions to help make your outfit more profitable. Now, one of those individuals is Kirk Donsbach with StoneX Financial Incorporated. He is on hold as we speak. So up next, we talk markets and the recaps. It's all right here on the Ranch It Up Radio Show. Before you purchase your next set of bulls or females, remember this. The seed stock business is about genetic improvement and customer service. Allied Genetic Resources understands this as well as anyone. Marty Ropp with Allied. That's our charges as seed stock producers is you know, people look at us and you've got to make genetics that work better for us. We see that charge. We understand that charge. And we're going to use all the tools we can to get there. Allied Genetic Resources, where the mission is commercial customer success, period. Everyone asks me, Tigger, where do you get your boots? What do you look for in boots? Well, for me, it's customer service and American-made boots and tack. Medora Boot and Western Wear takes care of everything I need. You can shop online at MedoraBoot.com or follow along Facebook and Instagram. Give Medora Boot and Western Wear a call and tell them Tigger sent you. Medora Boot and Western Wear, making boots great again. Hashtag Tigger approved. We are a Westway Feed family of nearly 300 people working together to deliver over 2 million tons of product to our customers annually. We are Westway, uh, together as a team. We're working together to do great things to feed the people of this country. At Westway, yes, it's about our feed, but it starts with passion. Welcome back, everyone, to the Ranch It Up radio show. That time when we check in with Kirk Donsbach, StoneX Financial Incorporated. You can subscribe to his free newsletter by texting the word cattle, C-A-T-T-L-E-2-33777. It goes over more detail of the markets, what happened, why they happened. Really good information, gives you a good foothold, and also has Kirk's contact information. So if you need to engage in further conversations, that is the best place to start. So, Kirk, with that, numbers, what are we looking at from last week? Well, good morning, Tigger. As of Friday, August 13th, September feeders, and our listeners will notice we switched from August to September. Mm-hmm. September feeders are 251, 22 and a half, down 220 on the week, with the CME feeder index at 244.52. That's 132 lower on the week, leaving our basis versus August futures a negative 323. The October live futures contract is at 181 and a quarter. That's down 185 on the week. With cash trading mostly 180 in the south, with some high grading cattle trading 186 in Kansas. The north traded 188 to 190. The five area weighted average was up 86 cents at 188.41, leaving the basis a positive 803. Weekly slaughter came in at 603,000 head. That's down 10,000 head versus last week and 42,000 head lower than the same week last year. Choice boxes closed the week at 302.61. That's up 73 cents on the week. And you can kind of see where the packer margins are being compressed by those higher live prices and basically steady box prices. To wrap this all up, December corn closed the week at 487 and a quarter. That's down 10 and a quarter on the week. With Friday's WASDE report coming out neutral versus expectations, the grain crops are coming into a seasonal low here in the August first couple of weeks of September. 
This is Cracky Johnson with the Florida Cattlemen's Association. The 29th Annual SBA Quality Heifer Sale in memory of Bill Barthel, presented by Florida Heritage Beef. The sale is hosted by the Arcadia Stockyards in Arcadia, Florida, Friday, August 25th, and the first female will enter the ring at 1 o'clock. Consigners include Spur Landing Cattle, Longino Ranch, Kempfer Cattle Company, Cow Creek Cattle, Eagle Island Ranch, Mo Brangus, Lightsey Cattle Company, Walpole Cattle Company, Williamson Cattle Company, Perry Cattle Ranch, Dixie Cattle Company, Dee's Brothers, Philip Crawford, and many more. The sale boasts a great offering of Brangus, Beefmaster, Gertz, and other Brahma and Angus-influenced females and will include bread and open heifers. Buyers will have a chance to win the $1,000 bull credits from both R.A. Brown Ranches and Gene Plus. Also, there'll be a drawing for a spring gobbler hunt on Buck Island Ranch, and a backpack from King Ranch Saddle Shop and many more. Sponsored by Florida Heritage Beef, Fenco Farms, Datamars, and Gallagher. For more information, call Kevin Escobar at 813-629-8049 or Cracker Johnson at 352-535-5320 or look us up on Facebook. Florida Cattlemen's Association Quality Heifer Sale. Thank you. And now that's going to wrap it up for today. A big thanks from our crew to yours, Kirk Donsbach with Stonex Financial Incorporated, Paul Mitchell with Pharmatan and Imogene Ingredients, and of course to you, the boss lady, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. A big thank you to our partners, the American Galve Association, the Tri-State Livestock News, the Farmer and Rancher Exchange, and the Fence Post, Westway Feed Products, Medora Boot and Western Wear, Dakota Cowboy, Allied Genetic Resources, LivestockMarket.com, EquineMarket.com, AuctionTime.com, RFDTV, and Wrangler. And crew, so glad you all came with us one more time as we ranch it up. Be sure to follow and like us on Facebook at Ranch It Up Show. Updates there multiple times a week. Our email, RanchItUpShow at gmail.com. You can call and text us 24-7 at 707 Ranch 20. That's 707 726 2420. And spread the good word. Join us again next week where it's always Tigger approved. Stay ranchy and ranch it up. <laughs> <laughs>